Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report. I'm Matthew Peterson, and let's just be honest here. This can be a boring time-ish. We're being real here. We're talking about practice squad and guys who probably will never see the field anyway come the regular season. But hey, it's football and it's fun to talk about. However, there is some big news coming out of the latest Browns practice squad waiver wire news, and that's about wide receiver Kaderil Hodge. Hodge was picked up off the waiver wire by the Detroit Lions Claimed during that period, the first round of it earlier today, and immediately he's going to make a big impact in Detroit. The wide receivers in Detroit, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry, they're garbage. It's bad. I'm talking B-A-D bad, like 0-16 bad in Detroit. But this was a gamble that Cleveland knew when they released Hodge. Um, you knew that he had a good chance of someone else picking him up. The Browns really were not shy about expressing their interest of wanting to bring Hodge back. I think it was just about getting rid of that $2 million play uh, cost tag that came with them, and this is the price you pay. You could have paid to kept him on. Ultimately, Cleveland realized or decided that $2 million was just worth the gamble of maybe he goes elsewhere, and that's exactly what happened. Detroit claims him. I know the Browns were hoping to get him back, but just did not happen. The Lions did not let him seep through. So let me know. Vote in the comments. Should the Browns have kept Hodge? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Personally, I'm torn because, sure, you don't pay $2 million for a guy to be your sixth wide receiver, maybe fit that best, but also he's a quality football player. So, you know, you don't let quality football players walk out the door. I, I, I'm in between right now. For me, I'm going to give it a... Uh, I'm going to give it an N. Okay, I'm going to give it N. Yeah, I finally made up my mind there. Just because $2 million for someone that wouldn't see the field that much just doesn't make that much sense to me. The Browns have released a handful of practice squad members so far. Cleveland making some moves. We've got a preliminary list. Not the full 16 just yet. But the biggest name right there on the screen to me is Nick Mullins. Yeah, the former San Francisco quarterback here was with the Eagles during preseason released by them, and then he lands on the Browns practice squad. We'll talk about him later on. Other practice squad guys, though, Porter Gustin. That's probably one of the biggest names for me right now. I thought he had a good chance of making the Browns 53-man roster, so good to see that he's able to return to the practice squad, only because other teams were probably looking at him and bringing him in if they were short at that defensive end. And honestly, the Browns are decently short at pass rushers. Outside of... Uh, Garrett and Clowney and McKinley. There's not a clear fourth pass rusher, so I bet Gustin will probably see some regular season action at some point. Finally, the ultimate biggest name coming back on the practice squad is Sheldon Day, because here's a guy that was in the mix for the starting rotation and working with the ones throughout all of training camp, and ultimately for Day, he's released, but he comes back on the practice squad exactly what the Browns were hoping for. I absolutely expect Sheldon Day to get activated to the regular season, the 53-man roster, at some point. This is not a quality depth at the uh, defensive tackle spot for the Browns. They're still figuring out their second unit, so I'm guessing a couple good practices from Day and someone just having a bad week could you know, spark a move right there. So keep an eye on Sheldon Day to get promoted to the active 53-man roster at some point during the regular season. Let me know in the comments, though. Who do you think is the top hidden gem on the practice squad for the Cleveland Browns? There's a lot of routes you can go. This is a very talented practice squad, okay? And I know we're just talking about practice squad, guys that watch the football games on Sunday from their couches, not at First Energy Stadium or wherever the team is on the road. For me, I, I think Nick Mullins is a fine candidate, okay? Anytime you got a good quarterback on your practice squad, that's very – that makes your GM and your coach sleep a little bit better in case the worst happens. But honestly, I think Sheldon Day. So Nick Mullins, though, talking about him here, here's my approach on quarterbacks, okay? And this is just practice squad, guys, so what does it really matter? Well, every single NFL season, about half the starting quarterbacks will miss at least some time, okay? So, A, you hope you're in the good half. But if you do happen to be in the bad half – for those quarterbacks that do miss some time, it's usually not too long, two, three, four weeks max if they're not on IR. And during those weeks, it's pivotal that the backup, you know, just steers the ship, drives the bus. And so if you can find a quality backup in Mullins, who right now is just the third string guy, he's behind Case Keenum. But Keenum didn't really impress me too much in the preseason. 
So I'm all for extra talent at that quarterback spot if you can find it. So grade the move of Nick Mullins to the practice squad for me. A, B, C, D, or F, I'm giving it an A, okay? Mullins is a quality practice squad quarterback, okay? Didn't work out starting-wise in San Francisco. He was always just coming off the bench anyway, but he's great for the practice squad. So for me, big A, but let me know what you think down in the comments. Other moves that I liked a lot on the practice squad, Sheldon Day. Like I mentioned, he was in the rotation for that starting defensive line. I don't think he really had much of a shot of winning it unless they wanted to go on from Andrew Billings, which seemed like a long shot anyway. But hey, let's get out of the weeds. For me, if you got Day on your practice squad, this is going to be great because if there is just not a good you know, bond going on in that interior defensive line and you've got some troublesome um, you know, poor run tack, uh, run stop, and all that jazz. You can bring Day up from the practice squad. He's an immediate help who's got plenty of experience in the regular season. Other practice squad guys I'm in love with here: Porter Gustin. Okay, I had him on, on my original 53-man roster. So for Porter to clear waivers and not get picked up and return to Cleveland, that's a big win for GM Andrew Barry. Browns fans, I know, I just know you cannot wait for week one in Arrowhead. So go ahead and subscribe right now. That tells me two things. One, that you just can't wait for some actual real starting 11 football. And that way we can give you more Browns content throughout the entire regular season. Now, with these transaction and waiver moves, there are some people that move on, okay? Offensive lineman Colby Gossett, he is out of here, off to Atlanta, who's really short at the offensive line spot. So the Falcons picked him up again. This is just part of the gamble, right? If you like a guy, can you stash him on the 53-man roster, hold him there for sure, or do you think he'll clear waivers? It's a big roll of the dice, and the Falcons picked up, I think, a good offensive lineman right here. Sheldrick Redwine as well. He's off to New York. He's off to the Big Apple. He'll play for the Jets who have just gutted their secondary, okay? You don't have to go too far into it, but wow, they have no one right now, honestly. No one of note. So Sheldrick Redwine, I think he's going to make an immediate impact in New York. Had some time with the Browns regular season 53 man during the last regular season. Made an interception. Made a couple great plays. I think this is a great pickup for the Jets. Now Marvin Wilson, probably one of the biggest undrafted free agents from the 2021 NFL Draft coming out of Florida State. Defensive tackle spot, I think the Browns would have liked to put him back on their um, practice squad, but the Eagles come in and swoop him. So I think the Eagles get a you know a good project to work on. Okay, Wilson was a lot had a lot of hype in 2019 frankly looked fat and slow in 2020 down in Tallahassee. So maybe the Eagles can mold him back to that 2019 statue. But, yeah, Browns miss out here. Don't put him on the 53-man roster. I bet they would have liked to put him on their practice squad. But the Eagles take him. So who is the toughest goodbye, okay? Who are you thinking? Kaderil Hodge, I think, is an obvious answer. But maybe get in the weeds a little bit. Maybe, you know, a little low-key answer. For me, I think Marvin Wilson could have been exciting just because the potential from 2019 was there, and that's a spot that the Browns don't have a ton of depth at, and they're looking to upgrade anyway. So if you can get Marvin Wilson back to the, you know, what some people called a first-round form two seasons ago before big fallout, that would have been exciting. But let me know what you think. Toughest goodbye. Sayonara. Adios down in the comments.